In this learning session, we're going to look at preparing to process our W-2s at the end of the calendar year. We'll identify any resources that will help you during this process, and we'll generate the W-2 tax forms so you can look at the process from start to finish. To prepare to process your W-2s, you'll first want to make sure that all of your payroll tasks have been processed. So this includes your periodic processing items, such as paying out bonuses, making sure your vacation payouts are done, any other accruals. So all of that should be done for that calendar year you're going to process your W-2s for. In addition, make sure that your employee records have been updated, such as the social and the address. If you have any questions about the W-2 filing requirements, then reference the irs.gov website. Before you process your W-2s, you also may want to check out the Atrix website. This is the company that we've partnered with for our e-filing services. And the website that will give you the information specific to SAGE 300 is partner.atrix.com slash SAGE 300. This will give you all the information, including the services that they provide, pricing options, bundles, and it gives you some good support and FAQ information as well. Make sure that your latest tax updates have been downloaded, and if you have any questions about this or if you're unfamiliar with the process, then reach out to your business partner who has lots of experience with this process for you. Another resource that is a lot of help, especially for any of your year-end questions, is our year-end center that's out on Sage City. This includes FAQs about how to adjust those fields on the W-2 if you see they are incorrect. In addition, if you're required to file for the Affordable Care Act as well, then reference either the Sage City website that we just talked about or sageu.com Search SAGE 300 Affordable Care Act for training on that process as well. To generate our W-2 forms, you'll want to log into SAGE 300 and go to your U.S. Payroll module, then click Payroll Government Reports, and there is a W-2 tax filing icon. Once you double-click on the icon, the first page is to identify the payment year that we will be processing for, now, I'm using sample data, so that information is set in the year 2020. So I'm going to leave my payment year at 2020, but you'll want to verify that your payment year is correct. Next up is the employees that we're processing the W-2s for. If you have a selection list of all of your employees that you want to process, then you would use the finder and locate your selection list that you have already created. Otherwise, you can create a range of employees by selecting the From Employee and To Employee fields. I'm going to generate for all of the employees, so I'm going to leave the From Employee field blank and the To Employee field at all Z's. Next, I will identify how I want to sort the information, and I'm going to sort by employee name. I'm also going to sort by active employees. Verify your employer information the name, address, city, state, and zip, and employee identification number. If it is a foreign address, check the box, and you'll also need to put in a country code. Now I'm going to click Print eFile. You may get a prompt asking you to update for the most recent forms. If you do, then I suggest automatically updating, which will give you the proper forms. You can also download the forms to your computer and then process the update manually. You can continue expired, but you will not be able to file at this time. You will need to update to the new forms before you can proceed. And then cancel without doing anything. Now because I'm a sample, I'm going to continue expired. The wizard has indicated that my year is 2020, but the forms are for 2017. So there may be some inaccuracies. I'm going to continue, but in the real world I would cancel and fix my error. Now we get a prompt saying that basically going forward, the company information and information on the W-2s that we fixed at this point 
will be stored and processed for only the W-2s. Let's give an example of the employee's address. If I notice when I'm processing and verifying the employee information that one of the addresses is wrong and I fix it, it will not go back and feed into my payroll employee screen inside Sage 300. It will only fix it for the W-2. At this point, you would have a choice. You can cancel out and then reprocess your W-2s and generate them again, or you can fix it in the W-2s, but just note that you may need to go back into your U.S. payroll and fix it there as well. Click OK. And now we're going to go through the wizard process. We can test drive or we can just start processing. I'm going to test drive with all of my employees. And remember that a test drive does not allow you to save the information. It just shows you how the process will work. Verify the EIN. And then fill in the company information if there's anything missing. Next up, verify the type of filer. Are you filing for your company or employer, or are you a third-party paid tax preparer? In addition, if you have 10 or more companies, then you can look at the batch filing, which this website will give you more information. Verify the tax account numbers and the states and local tax information that you will be filing at this time. You can add or edit if you need to. If you get some information that the system knows that will be incorrect, it will give you a prompt telling you that there's incorrect information and to fix it at this time. Next up, answer the questions on whether you have any employees who are exempt from any part of Medicare or Social Security taxes. Do you have any employees who earn Social Security tips that must be reported? Do you want to use control numbers on your W-2s? And do you have any employees who elected to receive W-2 forms electronically and that's the only way they want to receive W-2s? I'm going to say yes on that one. And just remember that if an employee wants to receive the W-2 forms electronically, it does require a signature at some point. Next up is your W-3 information. So we would fill out this information. If you want to enter a, an optional control number, you can do so here. We need to verify the kind of payer that we are, the kind of employer, if there's any third-party sick pay, and if there is, then what is the income tax withheld. Enter your establishment number or other EINs if they apply, and whether this business has been terminated this year. If you have any questions about the fields on these wizard pages, reference the help icon in the top right corner and it will give you more information about the process. If you have more than one data file that's going to be generated and submitted in, and they should all go on this EIN number, then reference that yes, you have multiple payroll data files that will be needed to combine. We only have one single payroll data file, so I'm going to click Next. It's reminding me I'm in test drive mode, so no information will be saved or transmitted. The next part of the process, you're just going to walk through the information, and it will tell you at the top what we're verifying at this point. Right now we're going to verify our employee information. And you have a slider that if you move your mouse over and get the up and down arrows, you can actually click and hold and drag to get more real estate open for this section that you're reviewing. Review the social, the, the name, the address, city, state, zip of your employees. Once you have verified this, click Next. The process will include checking your work for any known errors that will cause a rejection. In this case, we have a social security number that begins with a 9 and that's not allowed. So I can print the list so I can reference it and go research if I need to, or I can click go back and correct. It will highlight the first of the fields that I need to check and any others will be in red. 
So let's fix this now. And notice it's still in red. Any others that I need to fix, I would do so at this time, and then click Next Step. And it's going to re-verify to see if that problem has been resolved. And it has. Next step is to verify the electronic W-2 information. And you'll notice that these fields have now been highlighted for us. And this is the part that we're re reviewing at this time. So I'm going to move my bar over. I need to see who I'm working with, so I'm going to readjust. And Alan here is getting an electronic W-2, and I need to provide his email address. And I would continue on for all of the emails for my electronic W-2s. You also have the option of highlighting the electronic delivery column header, right-clicking on it, and then importing a CSV file to this column. If you have tons of employees and you want to import, there is this option as well. It would need to be set up with the Social Security number being that unique identifier for the import CSV file. Once we're done with the electronic W-2 information, I would click Next Step. All right, now I need to move my bar back over because now I'm referencing information on the right-hand side of the screen, which is the wages and Social Security tips. I would then verify all of this information and click Next Step. Then I would verify the state information. Now it's going to take us to the next part of the process where I can identify what kind of e-filing service I would like. If there's any bundles or savings, it will tell us that here on this page. When I click Next, it allows me to choose my options. I can choose between complete W-2 e-filing or other options. So the e-filing center will print and mail employee copies. It will give you the electronic W-2 only employee copies, file my federal W-2s and W-3, file my state, and allow the electronic W-2s to be available for all employees. So that's my complete, or I can choose other. Because I'm just using a sample today, I am going to say print my employee W-2s, e-file my federal, print my federal, and print my employer copy. Then it reminds us of the benefits of the complete W-2 e-file service, and I can acknowledge that yes, I'd like this instead. Do I want divider sheets when I'm printing? I'm gonna say no for this. This screen shows what forms we're going to print. Click Next. Now we'll be able to look at the forms as they will be submitted and sent to the government. So it tells us that this is report one of five. This is the employee W-2. I have 15 employees, so I have 15 pages of information here. I can review this information as it's laid out on the form. I can go to the next of the employee by clicking on the forward arrow or go back with the back arrow. We can click print copy for my copy and then click next step. Or I can click print copy here or if I say next step, it's going to ask if I'd like to print the employee W-2 now. So I'm going to say no for this exercise. Next step is my employer W-2s. I have four, so I would verify this information, print my information, and click next step. Report number three is my federal W-2 form. So I have eight pages, so I would run through the eight pages and verify this information. Print my copy. And then I have my federal W-3 form to verify. And my notice to employees. Once I'm done, I click Next Step and it's going to ask me to log into the Atrix website. If you don't have a login, it should prompt you to set up that portion of the service at this time. Because I'm only using a sample, it's going to say that I'm done with the test drive. 
but after you've logged into Atrix, it's going to re-verify the information that you've worked with, it's going to give you your total price, and any next steps that you have at that time. And here's the login screen. When I log in, it says that any username or password works here. And if I wanted to receive a sample confirmation email, I can enter my email address here. All right, and this concludes my test drive. No actual payroll information was transmitted on this filing. Here I can click to set up my e-file account today if I have not done so. And it takes me back to Sage 300. So after you filled out the forms, then if you're using Atrix to e-file, then they would prompt you and you would set up your date to e-file those. At the beginning of this video, I referenced those websites for the Atrix website, irs.gov, your Sage City Year End Center, and Sage U for more training. So this concludes the process of filing the W-2s.